Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening, welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Akansha Parimu. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you. Students fight toxic smog as schools reopen in pollution hit Indian capital. Supporters of Pakistan's ex PM Imran Khan block roads in new protest. A Nepal earthquake kills at least six rattles parts of India. And now for all the details. Students in the Indian capital, New Delhi, were exposed to pollutants as they stepped out of their homes to go to their schools that reopened after being shut down due to pollution on Wednesday. The overall air quality index stood around 300, which is considered very poor. Students in the Indian capital New Delhi were exposed to pollutants as they stepped out of their homes early on Wednesday to go to their schools that reopened after being shut down due to pollution. Primary schools were reopened and curbs were lifted on certain construction activities after pollution levels improved to very poor category from severe. The overall air quality index stood at around 300 in most parts of the city. Children reached their schools wearing masks to protect themselves from the smog hanging over the city that pushed the air quality in the unhealthy category in many places. The kids are coming to school now, there was a lot of pollution in the evening. So, the school is fine, the kids are going to study a little bit. So, I was going to open it for 2-4 days so that there will be a little bit of pollution in the evening. तो वही है चलो ठीक है अगर खुल गए तो क्या क्या कर सकते हैं अब तो लाना तो है ही बच्चों को। The national capital and surrounding areas are enveloped in a layer of smog each winter as cold, heavy air traps, construction dust, vehicle emissions and smoke from the crops stubble burning in the states of Punjab and Haryana. Air quality could worsen later this week. The system of air quality and weather forecasting and research said on its website. The United States is committed to work with India on its transition away from Russia, the U.S. State Department spokesperson said on Tuesday, adding India should decrease dependence on Moscow as it is not reliable. The remarks came after India's Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar said, India will continue buying Russian oil as it is advantageous for the country. Our soft to India's Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar asserted that India will continue buying oil from Russia as it is in the country's advantage. U.S. Department of State spokesperson Ned Price emphasized it is in the collective interest that India should decrease dependence on Russia as it is not reliable. Tuesday marked the fifth meeting this year between Jay Shankar and his Russian counterpart Sergei Lavrov. India has emerged as Russia's largest oil customer after China as refiners snap up discounted Russian oil shunned by Western buyers over Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Ned Price said the countries have learned the hard way that Russia is not a reliable source of energy. But again, the issue is of India's bilateral interest with Russia, he added. Russia is far from reliable in any realm. Uh, so it is not only in the interest of Ukraine, it is not only in, in the interest of the region, of the uh, collective interest that uh, India uh, uh, decrease its dependence on, on Russia over time, but it's also in India's own bilateral interest, given what we've seen from, from Russia. This comes as the Secretary of U.S. Treasury, Janet Yellen, is scheduled to visit India this week. Although India, a traditional ally of Russia, has not explicitly condemned the Russian invasion, Indian PM Modi had earlier told President Vladimir Putin that it is not an era of war. In news from Pakistan, supporters of Pakistan's former Prime Minister Imran Khan have launched fresh protests 
against the assassination attempt on their leader, blocking roads in multiple locations in Rawalpindi city that has brought life to a grinding halt. This comes as Khan's PTI party is slated to resume its long march rally on Thursday. Supporters of former Pakistani Prime Minister Imran Khan blocked roads near capital Islamabad for a second consecutive day on Tuesday, disrupting traffic and forcing schools to close, days after an assassination attempt targeted their leader at a recent anti-government rally. The former cricket star who has been pressing for a general election since he was ousted as Prime Minister after losing a parliamentary vote in April was shot at the rally last Thursday. He is recovering from leg wounds. Khan supporters burned tires as they set up protest camps across roads, with police making a number of arrests. They said an FIR or the first information report should be registered against those whom Khan has accused. We are trying to dominate the Khan people, that they have been FIR. اس سلسلے میں ابھی تک ایف آئی آر نہیں ہوئی ہے اس اس حوالے سے ہم یہاں پہ احتجاج کر رہے ہیں اور یہ کل سے احتجاجی مظاہرہ چل رہا ہے اور انشاءاللہ اس ٹائم تک چلتا رہے گا جب تک خان صاحب کے جو جائز مطالبات ہیں وہ پورے نہ ہو جائیں مین وائل فارمر فارن منسٹر اینڈ سینئر پی ٹی آئی لیڈر شاہ محمود قریشی نوٹیفائیڈ دیٹ اس پارٹیز لانگ مارچ وڈ ریزیوم آن تھرس ڈے فرام وزیر آباد دی مارچ واز ہالٹیڈ آن نومبر the political tension comes as Pakistan is grappling with economic turmoil exacerbated by recent flooding that the government estimates caused economic losses for $30 billion. Moving on, amid an all-time high inflation, the price of LPG cylinders has been skyrocketing in Gilgit, Baltistan. Locals have claimed it has made their lives difficult as it is an essential requirement to light up fire and keep themselves warm amid winters. They have blamed the government has been apathetic to their plight and have demanded relief. With the advent of winters, locals in Gilgit, Baltistan are reeling under the high price of liquefied petroleum gas LPG cylinders amid an all-time high inflation. Residents have also raised concern over frequent load shedding that has been forcing them to resort to cutting trees for their basic needs. A local journalist said the government should check the price rise, which has made survival difficult, while the felling of trees for cooking, heating and other needs has left the already fragile ecology on a brink. We are talking about the price of the price. The price of the gas is very difficult. The price of the gas is very difficult. And then, because the price of the Gilgit Baltistan is used in the Sardiyo, the price of the price of the price of the price is very difficult. مہنگا ہو چکا ہے ایک طرف لکڑی کے کارڈنے سے جو موسمی جو آلودگی پیدا ہو جاتی ہے گلیشیرز پر اس کا اثر پڑتا ہے اس کی وجہ سے بھی لوگ اس وقت اس موسم میں سخت مشکلات کا سامنا کر رہے ہیں لوکل سن گلگت بلتستان بلیم that the Pakistan government has repeatedly turned a blind eye to the problems faced by the people in the illegally occupied region years of continued neglect by Islamabad has made Gilgit Baltistan one of the most backward regions under Pakistan's rule. At least six persons were killed when a powerful 6.6 magnitude earthquake jolted the remote mountainous region of western Nepal early on Wednesday. Tremors were also felt in parts of India, including capital New Delhi. However, there were no reports of damage on the Indian side. An earthquake of magnitude 6.6 in Nepal early on Wednesday killed four children and two adults and injured five others as several houses collapsed in the western district of Dota. Footage from the Nepali army showed mud and brick houses destroyed by the quake in the Himalayan country and rescuers digging through the rubble to look for survivors. Nepal's Prime Minister Sher Bahadur Deoba took to Twitter to express condolences to the families of those who died in the incident. He also instructed the relevant agencies to provide immediate relief and rescue in the affected areas. The quake was centered about 100 miles northeast of Pilibhit, a populous city in the neighboring Indian state of Uttar Pradesh, and occurred at a depth of 10 km, the European Mediterranean Seismological Center said. <laughs> 
tremors were also felt in several areas in northern India, including capital New Delhi. So, ये ज़्यादा झटका feel करने का मतलब है कि जहाँ जहाँ इसकी intensity perceptible है, जहाँ तो पर intensity तीन और चार जहाँ पर हुई होगी, तो हाँ तक पहुँचने में हमको होगा, जैसे दिल्ली में हमारा तीन तक आया intensity, तो हम काफी उसको feel किए, और दिल्ली का जो नीचे में जो alluvial soil है, वो काफी amplify करता है. There were, however, no reports of damage on the Indian side, though the quake woke up many residents in several cities, including Gorakhpur and capital New Delhi. The Taliban has revealed the final resting place of movement's founder, Mullah Omar, whose death and burial they kept secret for years. Rumors surrounding Omar's health and whereabouts abounded after the Taliban were kicked out of power in 2001 by a US-led invasion and they only admitted in 2015 that he had died two years earlier. The burial site of Taliban's co-founder Mullah Muhammad Umar Mujahid was disclosed in Afghanistan's southern Zabul province earlier this week. After his hierarchy was dethroned from power following the US lawyer military invasion of Afghanistan in late 2001, Omar went underground and, according to media reports, died of illness in 2013 in Pakistan. However, his supporters have denied the report, claiming Omar passed away nine years ago inside Afghanistan and was buried secretly to avoid the possible revenge of enemies. Omar, who was aged around 55 when he died, founded the Taliban in 1993 as an antidote to the internecine civil war that erupted following the decade-long Soviet occupation. Under his leadership, the Taliban introduced an extremely austere version of Islamic rule and introducing harsh public punishments, including executions and floggings. This comes after over a year the Taliban seized control of the war-torn country following a hasty U.S. military pullout from Afghanistan last August. The preservation work of centuries-old carpet script writing is in full swing at the Indian Institute of Carpet Technology in Jammu and Kashmir. Kashmiri carpets are known across the world for their superior quality and unique handwork done by artisans of the valley. The preservation work of centuries-old carpet script writing also known as Talim, is in full swing at the Indian Institute of Carpet Technology in Srinagar city of India's northern Jammu and Kashmir. The practice of Talim is a unique method of manufacturing carpets and is distinct to the Kashmir region. Kashmiri carpets are very famous across the world due to their purity and unique handwork done by artisans. The coded script is a weaver's technical language and holds specific conventions to weave the design embedded in it. The digitization aims to promote this art and keep it alive for the future generation. I say 20 years ago, or when it was not modernization, people wrote it with their hands. So, this is a lot of work in this. Like we wrote papers manually. ये ए अगर एक कॉपी बनाते थे फिर दूसरी कॉपी बनाते थे इसमें ह्यूमन एरर्स की बहुत इम्पोर्टेंस थी कि बहुत ज़्यादा होते थे इसमें लेकिन चूंकि जब से ये हो गया है कंप्यूटराइजेशन सारा कुछ हो गया है हर एक फील्ड में ये चेंजेस आई हैं The officials at the institute said they have huge material to be digitized. The carpet industry of Kashmir has been one of the main contributors to the state economy, with firms exporting products across the globe including countries such as Germany, France and the United States. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.